The Democratic Party has been in civil war for years now, ever since Bernie Sanders had the nomination stolen from him in 2016. And we then saw chaos in the Nevada caucus. People called the police. It's escalated then with media smears against Bernie bros and Bernie Sanders himself. Recently being, being claimed, it's been claimed, that Russia was backing up Bernie Sanders to disrupt the American election. And now the civil war has gone from bad to worse to ugly because apparently Democrats have been calling the police on Bernie Sanders supporters. And it's not just that. First, we saw Project Veritas expose the insane rhetoric of the Bernie Sanders campaign, which for some reason no one in the media called out. But many Bernie supporters had to lock down their accounts. We then learned that a Bernie Sanders staffer was disparaging other candidates. He actually got fired. And now, now listen to this. The reporter who exposed the Bernie Sanders supporter is getting harassed and doxxed because the Bernie Sanders people are at war with the media, with the Democratic establishment, and it is getting so bad, they're literally calling the police on Bernie Sanders supporters. Recently, Bernie Sanders won the Nevada caucus in a landslide. Good for him. Good for you, Bernie. In response, tons of media personalities wigged out and acted like the sky was falling, uh, uh, for the most part, on MSNBC. It now seems like they're all starting to bend the knee because Bernie Sanders is winning. But let me tell you something. It's getting ugly. I literally have a story pulled up from Politico that says cops repeatedly called on Bernie backers. Their late night bullhorn protests at public officials' homes come as Sanders' opponents are increasingly calling out his supporters' behavior. We all know about the the Bernie bros smear. And I always think it's fair to point out the journalists and the establishment cronies who are upset someone said mean words to you on the internet, get over it. But we know this fight is ongoing. I'm going to make a prediction. And I've made it before, but I'll, I'll step it up. They're going to steal the nomination from Bernie again, and there will be riots in Milwaukee at the Democratic National Convention. Listen, they're already showing up to politicians' homes and bullhorning at night. The police are being called. What do you think happens when the establishment drops the hammer on the Sanders camp and says, not today, Bernie? Yeah, it's going to get nuts. This civil war in the Democratic Party is going to turn into a literal street conflict. So let's read about what's going on. And I really want to get into this journalist getting doxxed. This is nuts. But we're going to read about the police being called first. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are several ways you can give. But the best thing you can do is share this video. I do not think I'm endearing myself with any Bernie Sanders supporter by do- supporters by doing this video. But hey, we can at least try to get people outside of their echo chamber by, you know, if you share my video, it might help. But also many of you, around 30%, don't actually subscribe. That's the actual number. So if you do like this content, you want to get more, hit the subscribe button, click the little bell icon. YouTube is slowly not recommending my content and they're doing, you know, it's, it's shenanigans of, it's, uh, sh- shenanigans are afoot to hurt political commentary. So if you do like this content, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. Let's read the story from Politico about why the police have been called on Bernie supporters. They report the night before the Nevada caucuses, the chairman of the state's Democratic Party called police after several supporters of Bernie Sanders gathered outside his home at 11 p.m. with a bullhorn to issue a warning about the next day's election. Seriously, who thinks that's appropriate? That's insane. But we've heard what Bernie Sanders supporters think in the Project Veritas expose. They were actually saying it's time to re-educate conservatives. What do you think they're going to do with the liberals? They come for you first, dude. Quote, I want assurances that there isn't going to be any shenanigans going on tomorrow. The Democratic Party does not control what happens. Maria Estrada, a self-described burner from Los Angeles, said into the bullhorn. According to a Facebook live video she streamed to her on, on her personal page, she repeatedly said she didn't want to see a repeat of the 2016 election, which she insinuated was rigged against Sanders. At least three other times in recent days, Estrada led a group of Sanders supporters who gathered late at late at night outside the homes of Democratic Party officials and California lawmakers including those of Secretary of State Alex Padilla and State Democratic Party Chairman Rusty Hicks, police were called at least twice. Don't you remember what happened to Tucker Carlson when they showed up to his house protesting, started banging on his door? He said they cracked the door. They claim he's exaggerating. Tucker said his wife was hiding in the closet because these people were banging on the door. They apparently did go up to the door. I don't know exactly what happened. I wasn't there. But who in their right mind shows up to the home of a private individual? Look, I get these are public figures, but when they're at home, back off. The civility is breaking down. This is going to get absolutely bonkers. Mark my words. 
They say protesting is our right. Whether they called the police or not is irrelevant. Estrada, a longtime progressive activist, told Politico in a Facebook message, Estrada waged a surprisingly competitive primary against California Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon in 2018, losing 54 to 46 percent and is challenging him again in 2020. Estrada is not employed by the Sanders campaign and said none of the fellow protesters were either. Listen, I absolutely respect the idea of public protest, and she is right. She can show up and she can bullhorn. But guess what? My, my prediction is that people are not going to want to vote for you because you are nuts. But here's what's really crazy about this woman showing up in the middle of the night to Democrats' house, houses. She's actually running in the primary. She is trying to get into office. These are the people taking over the Democratic Party. William McCurdy, the Nevada Party chair and a member of the state assembly, confronted Estrada and other Sanders supporters outside his home nearly an hour after they arrived. Arrived, He told them they had crossed a line. Estrada shot back. If any BS happens tomorrow, the only person who crossed the line is you. McCurdy called the police to report the disturbance, but Estrada and the others were gone by the time the authorities arrived and the matter was closed, according to the North Las Vegas Police Department. McCurdy declined to comment for the story, but a source who is close to McCurdy and familiar with what happened said that he handled the situation with restraint. William didn't want the story out there before or after the caucus because he takes his role very seriously, overseeing a party run election and knows how much this needed to be viewed as a fair profit process for every candidate after 2016. They are in chaos. The dude literally couldn't say these people shut up to my house with bullhorns because he was worried that if then his candidate won or the establishment Democrat won, they would cry foul and say he interfered. He interfered to swing the vote. So there was nothing he can do other than just keep his mouth shut and let these lunatics run rampant. The incident and three others in recent days come at a time when some Democrats and rival campaigns say Sanders supporters are engaged in harassment and bullying, both online and in person. His opponents have increasingly highlighted examples and argued that Sanders has allowed a toxic culture to fester among his fans. He has, period. Grow a spine, Bernie. The conduct could, conduct could complicate Sanders' efforts to unite the party as he's established himself as the front runner for the nomination. Sanders has said that people who engage in threatening or bullying behavior are not welcome in his movement. His aides and allies have taken offense to the term Bernie bros, calling it a smear of his div- diverse supporters. You know what? I would have called it a smear even up, in, up until a few months ago. But I think we now can see it's getting bad. It's getting worse. And Bernie is doing nothing to stop it. The best example was Project Veritas. James O'Keefe, undercover videos of his supporters talking about gulags, rage education camps, you know, violent insurrection type things. He should have stood up and said, you are all fired. I will not stand for this. He didn't. The campaign said, shh, don't let anyone know. The only reason they're calling this stuff out it, right. Actually, they're not even calling it not now right now. They're not even calling it out. It's Politico reporting on it. So Bernie doesn't care. He knows that he has picked up the insane far left gutter trash of extremism and he's trying to use it to win. That to me is freaky and gross. If you can't win over the hearts and minds of regular people, don't use the violent lunatics. Sanders campaign condemned the protesters after viewing video footage of the incidents. I spoke too soon, but good on him for this. The conduct is completely unacceptable, Jeff Weaver, Sanders' longtime aide and senior advisor, said in a statement. No one who behaves like this is part of our movement. People who support this campaign do so by civilly mobilizing other voters to come to the polls. We have zero tolerance for these activities and condemn them in the strongest terms. But that is your base. They said the same thing about Trump and his supporters. And when, his tr- when, it, when Trump supporters got out of line, which is not a common occurrence, you call them out. It is a common occurrence for the far left lunatics to go out and do this kind of stuff. They showed, they showed up to Tucker's house. Trump supporters didn't show up to Rachel Maddow's house banging on her door. In a Facebook message, Estrada defended her approach. We want justice and we want accountability. And if I have to go to Dean Logan's home, Rusty Hicks' home, or anyone else who claims they represent my community, when in actu- actuality they don't, they should expect that the people will demand answers. What, at 9 p.m. with a bullhorn? That is not a reasonable approach to accountability. That's fear and intimidation. At around 9 p.m., the night after the incident, Estrada and several other Sanders supporters went to the L.A. home of California Secretary of State Alex Padilla. Padilla's office oversees California elections, including the Democratic primary on Tuesday. Alex Padilla, we don't want a repeat of 2016. 
Remember 2016 when you preemptively endorsed corporate candidates who were funding you and your close allies? An unidentified man said into a bullhorn outside Padilla's home, we want an actual fair election. I don't believe you do. You're showing up to people's homes and screaming at them. But, I'm not, but I think you get the point. I don't want to read through this because they basically say the ex- exact same thing over and over again. These people kept going to other people's homes and screaming into people's, you know, and the cops have been called several times. I want to show you that they have taken some action against this, but this problem inside Bernie's campaign is severe. But I want to make sure the focus is clear. I am not super concerned about accusations being levied against Bernie Sanders' campaign because smears are probable. I certainly think the protests are showing up, people's ho- showing up at people's homes late at night is is pure lunacy, but I do know the establishment has been smearing Bernie. I wish the Bernie supporters would have spoken up a long time ago. What we're really seeing here and what I really want to drive home is that the chaos and civil war within the party is going to result in the entire party being burned to the ground and they know it. Take a look at this story and then I'll jump ahead. Bernie staffer mocked Warren's looks and Pete's sexuality on his private Twitter account. Well, apparently this guy was, I believe this guy was fired. They say during the, uh, the most recent presidential primary in Vegas, Bernie Sanders suggested that critiques of some of his most antagonistic online supporters are largely unfounded and unfair, proposing that some of the worst might actually be Russians. They go on to talk about this individual, what he was doing, and it absolutely was this Bernie bro guy, as they've explained. Well, they say the Sanders campaign confirmed Mora, the Sanders campaign has confirmed, has been fired. So I believe that is the man who, who, who did it. He's been let go. But yeah, Ben Morrow was his name. But take a look at this story from the New York Times. Democratic leaders willing to risk party damage to stop Bernie Sanders. Interviews with dozens of Democratic Party officials, including 93 superdelegates, found overwhelming opposition to handing Mr. Sanders the nomination if he fell short of majority of delegates. Let me just stress that for you. The Democratic leaders know full well that they're in trouble, their party is being hurt, but they are willing to sacrifice their party to stop Bernie. He's the front runner. Now he's underwater in Florida because of his insane comments about Cuba, but, the, but he's, he's very likely going to win. I mean, he's, he's the front runner. The predict, uh, prediction models right now say it's likely going to a contested convention, but the Democrats, self, superdelegates included, will absolutely burn it to the ground to stop Bernie. I don't think the Democratic Party can recover from a, another election they've stolen. In 2016, they stole the nomination from Bernie. This resulted in chaos, and they're going to try it again. They're desperate. I can understand why. After that story we just saw about what Bernie's people are doing at their homes, what they know what, they, they know what will happen if they lose control. Trump's going to win. I don't think any of their establishment candidates can actually beat Trump because Trump is something else they've never seen before. I don't think Bernie can do it either. But I do think a Bernie ticket will hurt them in House elections, meaning the Republicans are going to easily sweep if Bernie's on the ticket. The best thing the Democrats can do is try and stop Bernie. And that's the fight. They're literally calling the police on these people. But now we can see just how insane things are really getting. A Daily Beast reporter was doxxed after publishing a story about Bernie Sanders campaign staffers harassing tweets. I get it, man. You want to call it a, a, a Bernie bros smear? You're free to do so. But come on, man showing up to people's houses, doxing them. After Scott Bigsby, a national reporter of the Daily Beast, published an article exposing a staffer on Bernie Sanders' campaign for using degrading language about other candidates on a private Twitter account, Bigsby was subjected to online harassment himself. A regional field director in Michigan, Ben Mora, tweeted a bunch of things. We know this guy. They say he was soon fired after Bigsby's story was published uh, on Monday, according to the campaign communications director, Mike Koska, who told the Beast, we are running multiracial, a multiracial, multigenerational campaign of justice where, dis- where disgusting behavior and ugly personal attacks by our staff will not be tolerated. Not true. Let me just say Project Veritas, but let's read on. Some prominent Sanders supporters spoke out to defend the campaign's decision to fire Mora. But now we can see this. Scott Bigsby tweeted, fans of Bernie Sanders are now crafting fake tweets from me in hopes of drawing the ire of a South Korean boy band that I've never heard of. He then said, this is super fun. Scott Bigsby should literally be catapulted off the planet, one Twitter user wrote. Another argued that that the Daily Beast is in the tank for the establishment Democrats and therefore fundamentally biased against Sanders and others on the left uh, and others on the left. Others accused Bigsby of being personally biased against Sanders and his policies. I think he is. 
I think the Daily Beast is in the bag for the Democratic establishment. But what are you going to do? The fight is on and this is nasty. And I'm glad to say I'm not party to it. I'm sitting back watching saying you guys eat each other. okay? but here's what I think is really funny. Nancy Pelosi says she's she'd be comfortable with Sanders on the top of the ticket. Well, here's the thing. Bernie Sanders supporters are many of them are fine people. You know, some of them are good people. But, you know, to to quote Trump, there are a lot of crazies doing a lot of crazy things. They're being called out and they are the reason why this fight is getting so ugly. They're showing up to homes. They're screaming. And Pelosi is just saying what she needs to say so that in the end, it looks like everything is stable in the Democratic Party. When in reality, they're all in sheer panic. While Pelosi and in the story they mentioned Schumer are saying, look, we're united, we're fine. That's not the case. The New York Times shows it. They are freaking out. This is Nancy Pelosi. I love this meme. This is fine. That's right. It's all coming down around you. Your house is burning to the ground. Your own party leaders and superdelegates are saying just as much. And you literally have Democratic Party members calling the cops on Sanders supporters. Michael Bloomberg, apparently, there, there is, is pay, accused of paying people to cheer for him at election debate. Cheers for candidate considered suspiciously loud given his performance. And people were booing Bernie when he was criticizing billionaires. That's the accusation. I'm not going to say it's true. I'm going to say this. The Democrats have sold their soul to billionaire Michael Bloomberg in a desperate bid to stop Bernie Sanders. The party is being burnt to the ground. There's fi- there's going to be fighting in the streets, I swear, in D- at the DNC. Last DNC in 2016, there were massive protests, people trying to break into the, into the convention. What do you think is going to happen now when many of those protesters are now delegates for Bernie and they're going to be in the convention? I'm going to say it. I would not be surprised if at the DNC convention, uproar, chaos, papers flying through the air, maybe a punch or two goes flying. I'm not kidding. Some of these people are nuts. They're showing up to people's homes. They're getting violent in the streets, Antifa, etc. We know what they're going to do. They've talked about it in campaign videos. What do you think happens at this big convention when they say, sorry, Bernie, you got 1,990 delegates. You were one away from winning. We're going to put it to the super delegates. And they all come in and say, Mike Bloomberg, what do you think the Bernie supporters are going to do? We see how they behave now with bullhorns. What do you think they're going to do in that moment surrounded with these two, these two groups in full on civil war? The protests in Milwaukee will be historic. There will be riots, smashed windows. And I certainly hope all of you who live in Milwaukee or on a business there, board up your windows before the DNC gets in there. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. I mean that seriously. They were protesting. I think, I can't remember where the DNC was in 2016, but yeah, it was crazy. And I was out there as people were trying to jump the fences. RNC, nothing. Because people are unified around Trump. Bloomberg is buying his way in. But there may be something changing. We all saw that Chris Hayes, or not, I'm sorry, not Chris Hayes. Who, who, who is the guy? It's uh, uh, Chris Matthews. Sorry. Chris Matthews had to issue an apology to the Sanders campaign and congratulate him after he freaked out over the Nevada win. We now see that MBC, MSNBC benches contributor who smeared Bernie Sanders staffers. I'll tell you what, it looks like the establishment is on the verge of collapse. The Democratic leaders like Pelosi and Schumer on the, on the verge of, of retirement. They're just too old. Bernie Sanders and his insurgent campaign are slowly taking over for better or for worse. And he's now the front runner. MSNBC, knowing who butters their bread, said, look, man, if Bernie's number one, we better not badmouth him because our audience is getting upset. So now MSNBC has benched uh, uh, one contributor, forced Chris Matthews to apologize. And now this MSNBC urged to fire Chris Matthews for refusal to believe women. The reason this story is interesting, and I'll do a, I'll do a longer segment on it, uh, probably for 6 p.m., but they were calling on Matthews to be fired from MSN- MSNBC for daring to oppose Bernie. The establishment is losing the Civil War, and they're, they're on the way out. Now, I don't know exactly what happened, but I will end with this. Poll, Biden retakes lead in Florida. It's possible Though they're losing in some in some areas, they may pull ahead in others. Bernie Sanders made a bunch of insane comments that hurt him severely in Florida and South Carolina, where he justified three times defending Cuban air quote literacy programs. I say air quote because they were like re-education authoritarian programs, if you know what I mean. Bernie defended it, and he's hurting in the polls because of it. Some prediction models and some forecasters are saying 
if Biden does well in Florida and South Carolina, then he's going to easily, you know, jump up in the delegate count with Super Tuesday around the corner. We'll see what happens. I, I, I think South Carolina is before Super Tuesday, then Super Tuesday. But don't count Biden out yet. That's what they're saying. Me personally, I've counted Biden out a long time ago. The real reason I'm showing this is not to claim that Biden is going to win. It's that Bernie is being hurt by comments he made. I think it's fair to say that Bernie represents urban elites, snooty, you know, educated college, you know, liberals and progressives. I shouldn't say liberals, but progressives and far leftists who believe in using violence to get what they want. They believe in using intimidation tactics to get what they want. Instead of playing the game the same as everyone else, they say, we'll just show up to your house and we'll bullhorn and harass you into bending the knee. You know what I'm going to say? I think they'll win. I do. Because as I've said before, no one is concerned about, you know, liberalists, like free speech advocates showing up to Twitter headquarters with crowbars and Molotovs. So they don't do anything. They ban you. They don't care. What are you going to do about it? But Antifa does show up. So they bend the knee to these people. Bernie, MSNBC has already gotten rid of one contributor. They're already, you know, urging, trying to get Chris Matthews fired. We know how the game is played. They will show up and they will protest you into submission. They will riot until you bend the knee. Trump supporters don't do that. Conservatives don't do that. But the left does and moderates don't. So who is going to win? I'll tell you what, the intimidation is going to work. How many people do you think are, now, are saying themselves in the Democratic Party? I don't want them at my house. Just tell me what to say and leave me alone. I'm willing to bet that's what we get. But I'll wrap it up there. It's uh, another ongoing tale in the saga of the weird internal civil war. Cops repeatedly called on Bernie backers. Well, there you have it. Bernie, Bernie bros, Bernie supporters. I don't know how you're going to excuse this one. I get it. You know, free speech protests. I agree. She is right. These people have a right to show up in bullhorn. However, you could argue that late at night, disorderly conduct, certain things, you know, there's a line. There really, really is. And while I do respect their right to protest, I think there is a civility line and you're going to cross it. They might win because of it. I disagree with it, but it will work. I think it will. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast News. It is a different channel and I will see you all then.